All right, B. Who are you and what's your game? If it isn't my dear old chum, Mr. Disraeli. Now, Prime Minister, which of your friends is about to stab you in the is a vital step in reforming our government. An exception. If the majority party is allowed to dictate the results of contested elections, we can scarcely call ourselves free. If we yield up our rights bit by bit to the courts, we can scarcely call ourselves free. And so like you, Gladstone. You would rather Certain throw your power. body upon the gears of what progress than surrender one iota of power. <laughs> By God, Disraeli, you are a fool. I'll not stand idly by and watch you drag parliamentary privilege through the muck. No, certainly not. You'd rather return us to the yoke of tyranny. So Perhaps while we're at it, Mr. Gladstone, we could repeal Magna Carta and return the crown to the bloody studs. How dare you, sir? Merely because I do not wish to see government placed in the hands of judges, you would make these slanderous accusations? I'll not stand for it. Then I shall obviate the requirement. Good evening, sir. Resume. Watch yourself, I'll be on you in a flash. Pleasure to meet you. B. B. My name's Herbert. And why are you following the Prime Minister?
you come from? Well, I was born in Crawley, but that's by the by. Who are you working for? Oh, I never got his name. Uh, old chap, big moustache, wore some kind of uniform. Who's ours, maybe? What's his game? Please, you'll kill me. And a three-story drop will shatter your legs and send you to the workhouse. Difference is you can run from him. Tomorrow! Oh, my lights are going to attack the Prime Minister's carriage on the way to Parliament. Perfect. <laughs> trouble at all. I, I don't want to be here and you don't want me here. Just... <gasps> She got that. for the house call. I'll have to find a way into that carriage. are you? Prime Minister, I'm your new bodyguard, Jacob Fry. I wasn't informed of any new bodyguard. Who's your commanding officer? Let the boy speak, Dizzy. <laughs> Madam, apologies. But we've learned of a threat on your life. And the Met thought it best to move quickly. Threat? What sort of threat? <gasps> that sort. If you excuse me a moment. Yeah. <laughs> 
here. What's all this? Not so fast, Your Excellency. about Gladstone, young man. I assure you, madam, Gladstone is innocent in this. But he tried to kill my husband. Well, we'll look into Gladstone. Perhaps you can help me with another inquiry, madam. A gentleman with ties to Parliament, older, wears cavalry uniforms and has a large moustache. You seem like a rough and ready sort of fellow, Mr. Fry. <laughs> well, yes, I am, actually. And are you familiar with the poorer districts of our city? Roughly. Wonderful. As it happens, I've been eager to tour the Devil's Acre. If you were to escort me, I'd be happy to assist you in your inquiry. That strikes me as a dangerous idea. Then it's settled. Come back here to Downing Street tomorrow night, eight o'clock sharp. Good day, Mr. Fry. But I... Good day, Mr. Fry. Madam? Mr. Fry? Ready to take the air? Devil's Acre should just be coming alive. I am afraid I must cancel our engagement. The lawn is crawling with scandal-hunting journalists, and I simply cannot be seen in the company of someone so... I'll see them off. You follow along when it's clear. Yes, yes. Uh, be gentle, won't you? The press are notoriously touchy about any violence to their person. 
<laughs> I'll barely ruffle a hair on their heads. Shh, Desmond. That's yours, if you can get those chaps over there to follow me. Right you are, sir. Go. <laughs> what a rough place. Give me your arm, Mr. Fry. Let us see what the Devil's Acre has to offer. Fond of strangers or cats. Do you know this gentleman is a oh, what was it? Yes, a costermonger of all things. Remarkable how the working classes occupy themselves, isn't it? Very industrious, I'm sure. Shall we go? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I have no earthly idea what you're talking about. <clears throat> Mrs. Disraeli. Quiet, Desmond. See what awaits us deeper in the acre. I will beg if it means you'll spare me. They, uh, they seem to be, um... I've been married twice, Mr. Fry. I'm fully aware of what they're doing. God bless them. 
What sort of meat is that man selling? Best not to ask. Why? Is it something dreadful? <gasps> is it rat? I don't mean to be indelicate, given the present company. But another name for it is Bow Wow Mutton. Here we are. The old one tub. Mm. So, this is a pint, is it? Huh? <laughs> Remarkable. <sighs> Nice doggy. Mm. Good boy, Desmond. Hand over the mutt. You'll change your tune when me and my friends find you. Now then, Desmond, to get you back to your mistress, whom I have just left entirely unattended in one of London's most dangerous pubs. Well, if you never told your father how you felt about him, how was he supposed to know? I never thought of it that way. I suppose deep down we all just want to be loved. Just so. Mm. Here, have a sweetie. Oh, Desmond and Mr. Fry, I'd like you to meet... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. John the Tosser. Charmed. I think we better get you home. Right you are, Mr. Fry. Come along, Desmond. <laughs> Well, if it isn't the dog walker. <laughs> now, let's not do something we'll regret. Evening, Mr. Fry. No, thank you. Perhaps now you might tell me about the man in the Hussar's uniform. Quite right. Lord Cardigan is the gentleman you seek. Tars. Always laughing on about his military adventures. Do you know where I might find him for a private conversation? I do indeed. He's in town now, as it happens, campaigning against the corrupt practices. <laughs> Catch him in the palace of Westminster. Do be careful. The government could ill afford another scam. I assure you, I'll be very discreet. Your stop, madam. My stop? <laughs> How delightful. Uh, thank you. Thank you for a splendid evening, Mr. Fry. I shall be sure to speak highly of you to Dizzy. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you. 
Please tell me again where we are going. I found a letter from the Prince Consort among Lusiton's research, marked with the same insignia as your key, dated 1847. 1847? The same year the Prince began renovations to Buckingham Palace. You think he added a vault for the Shroud? And since there is no map of the palace with the room marked Secret Vault. Your Highness, may I present Miss Evie Fry. Miss Fry, Maharaja Dulip Singh. A pleasure, Your Highness. My friend, the plans you asked for have been removed. Removed? By whom? Crawford Starrick, or someone employed by him. Yes, I thought you might recognize the name. I know where they are, but it is heavily guarded. That part will not be a problem. I thought not. We're going to need a plan. I can provide a distraction for the guards while you find a safe way inside. Oh, really? <laughs> for you, Evie, certainly. Well, once I'm inside, I'll find someone who knows where the papers are stored. And we will meet back on the train. Be careful. Someone is up there. We're not getting out of here alive. No.
Nothing here. What's the plan? When you give the signal, I'll draw the guards into a fight and then use a smoke bomb to get away. And I'll take advantage of the confusion. Ready? <clears throat> Absolutely. someone where the plans are. Uh, I'd swear, miss. Oh, I don't know where they've taken him. Taken who? The man. Dressed like you. The guards dragged him off. Henry, the plans you stole, where are they? I don't know anything about that. The plans. The mission. You're some of Clara's children. Oh, they took Mr. Henry. We gotta stop them. I bit one of them good, though. They dragged him off in a red carriage. They won't get far, though. One wheel looked like it was about ready to fall off. You can see the cart tracks. It looks so wobbly-like. Cart's been run off the road. They must be driving quickly. Knocking people over, too. And destruction of public property. I must be on the right track.
That must be the carriage. Found you. Now to find Henry. I'll come over there and deal with you myself. I don't know anything about the carriage, but there's been some strange happenings around here today. All kinds of unsavory types wandering around. Resident Trudeau! <laughs> Open it again, no doubt. Send someone to move the architectural plans. Do you have them? Do they hurt you? I'm fine. Let's go. What about the plans? The plans are lost. Oh. Evie, I'm sorry. Just concentrate on escaping, please.
Get Miss Nightingale to look at that. I must find the vault before Starek secures the shroud. We'll talk to the Maharaja again. I will talk to the Maharaja. You will get your head looked at. I'm sorry my capture hasn't done your plans. You'd be safer on the train. Even if you find the vault, you can't just walk into Buckingham Palace alone. I won't be alone. I'll see you back at the train, Mr. Green. Money is counterfeit. I'm an honest woman. What has happened? Your brother. What's he done this time? <laughs> the newspapers are all over Tupany's murder. And if that weren't enough, someone has stolen the currency printing plates. Was that also Jacob's doing? I doubt it. Now, no one trusts the bank or England's currency. There, there will be inflation, riots, manufacturing will jump to America for the cheap labor. 
In short, Britain is done for. Jacob, you've really put your foot in it now. What if I smuggle the plates back into the bank? Well, it'd certainly help. Better yet, it would call into question the stories on Tupany's murder, which would restore confidence in the economy. That's settled then. Britain lives to see another day. Oh, and if it's not too much trouble, would you mind destroying any counterfeit notes you come across so they don't circulate? Of course. It really is very good of you to help. Follow me. The counterfeit money is being spent nearby. Well, if you can call it counterfeit, with those printing plates, it's nearly impossible to tell the real notes from the fake ones. Mr. Avalon. If this gets out... Well, I've said this already. When people don't trust their currency, and we're already seeing riots... Mr. Aberlein. Apprehended any criminals of late? No more than usual. You are too modest. All in a day's work. All deal with you personally. No need to hesitate with these bargains. You two, follow me. I don't wish to be robbed on my way to the cart. The counterfeiters. Heard about the rioting at the bank? They can riot all they like. We won't be giving back those plates. What difference does it make? It's not like he has any real cash on him. Since we've got the printing plates, it's all real cash. Did you hear those crowds? Sounds like all of London is rioting. Nothing to do with us. I can't believe Jacob's managed to shatter the entire economy. Father was right. He acts in haste and repents not at all. Keep your eyes open. Anyone could be trying to get in. Is she waiting to bounce on someone? Yes, sir. Keep this place locked down. Yes, sir. What you Guard this place this? as you would the Bank of England itself. Absolutely, sir.
Now to sneak these back into the bank. Escape from Bedlam, lass. It's an odd place to find. I wonder who she's hiding from. There, as if they were never taken. London papers are running the story of how it was all a hoax. No more riots. Faith in the bank restored. Finally, I might get a quiet night on patrol. Miss Fry, 
I can't thank you enough. Glad we've averted catastrophe, Sergeant. Although it's Jacob who should be thanking me. What's this nonsense about needing a password to see Lord Cardigan today? Relax. I've got it in my pocket. Look sharp, men. Allow no one past unless I authorize them. Cardigan has gone too far this time. I've a mind to contact Scotland Yard myself. Come now, gentlemen. I thought us united in opposition against this perfidious law.
Gentlemen, Sergeant Freddie Aberline of Scotland Yard. Look at might this scandalous activity be taking place? Oh, oh, yes, 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 it's uh, just this way. Follow me, Sergeant, but discreetly, if you would. One doesn't like to be seen airing a fellow member of Parliament. Oh, I'll be buried. Usually I would be in disguise, but my clothes all fell into the Thames. One of my favorite disguises is a very ancient old lady, modeled after my mother. You'd be surprised how convincing I am. A tough old bird she was. Actually had a facial hair problem. A tough old bird she was. Actually had a facial hair problem. We'd sell the hair for dolls. Please let me know if I'm speaking too much. I am prone to flights of fancy. Oh, boy, 
Password? Um. Baby apple. Piss off. Blast and damn it all! Oh. Begging your pardon, my. I'll cut you in half! should fall not on the gloried fields of Crimea, but to an assassin's blade in the very halls of power. Are you finished yet? Take your bow, knave, for you have managed what no Russian battery, what no Indian tiger could achieve. Claim your trophy, and may you choke on it. Yes, but do tell me more about Balaclava. Farewell. Farewell, dear Britannia! Your dawn shall be dimmer that the Earl of Cardigan sees it not. God save the Queen and the Eleventh Hussars! What a prick. Apart from the death squad on our tail, apart from that. Backup's on the way. Why are you pushing yourself so hard? It's not your job to fight Templars. I had this colleague. He was our boss's son. I didn't much care for him at the start. Everyone treated him like he was so bloody special. To me, he just wasn't invested in, in, in anything that didn't affect him personally. But I was wrong about him. He became my friend put himself through hell, and he saved us all in the end. So, I reckon, well, I can't apologize to him, but I can, I don't know, I can try and live up to his example. You are a good assassin. Holy jeez! Hello. It has been too long. 
Galena! Blimey, I have not seen you since we blew up that lab in Paris. Uh, there were many explosions and you screamed like a baby. Bishop tells me Otzelberg is here. I will kill him for you. Super. Great news. Now, if you wouldn't mind keeping watch, I am going to lie down and die now. Rest. We have a big fight coming. Sean and Rebecca are safe for now, but we're still relying on you to find us that shroud. Thank you.